Welcome to chapter five, cadences and non-harmonic tones. We'll be talking about cadences in this video. A musical phrase is a musical sentence punctuated by a cadence. So when we have a sentence, the girl went to school, period. Period is the end of that sentence. A phrase is a musical sentence that's comprised of melody, harmony, and rhythm. When one can identify the length and substance of a phrase, one can perform it to engage the listener's ear to various subtleties. So a harmonic cadence, punctuation, that closes a phrase or section of music, and they're gonna differ in strengths. Some can be equated to a period, while others may be more like a comma or a semicolon. Cadences will give you the impression of musical repose a break in the action. Um, cadences are going to arise purely out of the relationship between dominant and tonic. There's one that will not do that, but generally um, a cadence is how tonic and dominant relate to one another. The first type of cadence is a perfect authentic cadence or PAC. The progression from five to one in major or five to little one in minor is a perfect authentic cadence. There are a couple of things that have to happen for it to be a perfect authentic cadence. First, all the chords must be in root position. And I remember when I wrote this, I was watching a show and they always talked about Mac Daddy this, Mac Daddy that. So I'm saying this is the Mac Daddy of all cadences, meaning it's the biggest and the best. Um, tonic has to be the highest sounding pitch. That's the second bit. Okay, and so it's the strongest cadence, and it sounds like this. So if you listen to the bass, it went one, five, one, and the, the soprano went one, seven, one. Everything's in root position. So the next one is an imperfect authentic cadence, or IAC. And an IAC is basically the same as a PAC, except the highest tone of the tonic chord is not tonic. So we're not going to be ending on one or and or you could have a substitution for five, meaning um, it could be seven instead of five. So seven, six to one or seven, six to little one. The third one is both. Um, both chords or one of them would be not in root position. So you could have five, six, or you could have one, six. Um, it might sound like this. I have three in the soprano in that case, and the bass went one, seven, one, which meant that it was not in root position. The next cadence is called a half cadence or HC. If a phrase cadences on five, it's a half cadence, like half of tonic, you're halfway there. Um, most composers would go one five or four five or two five. A half cadence in minor is called a Phrygian half cadence. This comes up on the AP from time to time. The only difference between a half cadence and a Phrygian half cadence is that the Phrygian half cadence happens in minor. So let's see, let me play you a half cadence. You wanted me to, there you go. Yeah, you want to finish it on one, but we're not there yet. We're hanging out and that's five. And the only difference to make it a Phrygian half cadence was I would, I would go. Now it's a Phrygian half cadence because I was in minor. Okay, number four, a plagal cadence. Now a plagal cadence or PC is the one that I alluded to earlier saying that it didn't have a tonic dominant relationship. Um, a plagal cadence is from four to one. It's also known as the amen cadence in church music. It's still five one when you're in minor. 
and it kind of sounds like this. There's no five in there. And really, there's only two notes that I'm changing um, in the soprano and tenor. Because I'm going from C, E, G to F, A, C. Um, number five, my favorite kind of cadence is a deceptive cadence. Yay! It's also known as a DC. If the five chord doesn't go to one, it goes to six. So why do you think it's called deceptive? I'll play you a deceptive cadence. You expect it to go to one, but it doesn't. It goes to six instead. The last kind of cadence is a rhythmic cadence, and this is not a harmonic cadence. So the first five, you really have to memorize those first five cadences, PAC, IAC, uh, HC, PC, and DC. A rhythmic cadence is just something you should be aware of. Rhythmic patterns can help to establish cadences when a pattern ends with a longer value than previously seen in the pattern. And this example right here is from Bach Brandenburg Concerto number three. Sorry. So we've had this ta 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 ta. But then at the end, we get ba da dun dun da and then you feel like you have arrived. A cadence often will make you feel like you've arrived. I definitely encourage you when you listen to WQXR to listen for cadences in music. It's where the music sort of regroups. It's almost if you're in a relay race where the person hands the relay to the next person because there's like a moment of repose, just a moment, and then it goes on. Okie dokie, that's cadences.